Hey guys, welcome back to the Fool's Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. Michigan, advance to the college football playoff. The committee officially select them as number two, and they're going to be playing TCU in the, I believe it's a Fiesta Bowl, and hopefully I didn't screw that up. And that's about what I thought would happen. I, the big question here was what the, would the committee do with USC, and they punish USC for playing a bowl, playing a conference championship game, which they lost. I guess they had their chance to get in. It's happened before. It's whatever it is. Maybe, you know. But Ohio State jumps back into the number four spot. Michigan's at two playing TCU. Georgia will play Ohio State. Decently game, decent and in, interesting games. Again, you have some big brand names in Ohio State and Michigan. I wonder how big Georgia is nationally as a team at, with a following. I don't know. If you had do, if you guys could let me know if like you're like around the country, how many Georgia fans you see around. Obviously, I think Michigan and Ohio State are, you know, national power famous teams, right? TCU, I would think, is pretty much Texas. I mean, they play an interesting game, right? And I want to just break down a little bit of just my initial thoughts about TCU. Right off the bat, Duggan. Man, I watched him yesterday and I've watched him just bits and pieces because, you know, obviously I'm watching Michigan mostly. But he is a dynamic player. They have 31 passing touchdowns. I'm not sure exactly. Most of those, I'm sure, are his. And only four interceptions as a team. I think three of those are his. One's not, but I could be, you know, it's close. They've only given up 24 sacks on the year, so they have a really good line. They average 40 points per game and 273 yards per game passing. Another thing you really got to be worried about, and I am, because I remember... Running quarterback shredding Michigan defense. Man, like, you know, Vince Young all the way back to the Texas days or all the Ohio State quarterbacks have just run and just torment me. Terrell Pryor and other, ugh. Like, Michigan's defenses could not stop the run, <laughs> the running quarterback. And it just, I'm, I'm just fearful because I know Duggan runs the ball well. He averages 3.6 yards per carry, but I don't think that that's just per yards. So I don't think that's just his yards rushing. I think that would also include his negative yards, his sacks. So I wonder what it is of, you know, his sack adjusted runs per carry. I watched him yesterday versus K-State. He On the game-tying drive, it was just like him and his feet just running, running, running. And he got, he was exhausted at the end of the drive, but he basically did the whole drive on his feet. And he got, you know, the touchdown and then the two-point conversion. And then... What on earth was TCU doing on, in overtime, third and fourth down, they decided to run with their running back inside the one-yard line. Like, um, you've had plenty of time in theory. Duggan should have been able to run the ball, but they didn't. Oh, no. Interesting there. Just keep that in mind about their coach that, you know, sometimes doesn't do the right thing. Again, makes me think of Indiana when their coach decided to, like, not run Howard, who was, like, their big power back in overtime, like Michigan's 48. 41 victory over Indiana years ago. It's like, you're like out thinking yourself, man. Just give it to your stud and get the touchdown. Like Minnesota did that a few years ago. Like when Mich they just didn't, you know, get in because they were just like kind of dumb. Like just do the, do what got you there. So it'll be interesting if TCU has any lingering impacts of that. But Duggan, definitely his feet are a big factor. And obviously his arm is really good. They average 40% on third down conversions anyways. To go along with that, the rushing attack. So 273 passing, 200 yards per game rushing. So they're really close to Michigan in this way. Except for Michigan's probably flipped. Where you have more rushing yards than passing yards. Probably about 200 for Michigan, 254. 250 rushing yards for Michigan, 200 passing yards for Michigan. So probably about the flip of that. But their running back, definitely Miller, is their top guy. 6.2 yards per carry, 17 touchdowns on the season. So he's kind of like their Blake Corum, right? He's like, if he's going to, he's going to be their number one option down there. So it's going to be real interesting. They have another one, Demacarder. Dem, oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm sure I said that wrong. Five and a half yards a carry. So TCO is going to be an interesting challenge. I think they're very much like Michigan. A really good defense as well. So it'll be interesting to see what the teams strategize. What they want to attack. What do they want to shore up on the defensive side. You know, what do they want to shore up offensively. 
I still think Michigan has so much potential that's untapped with J.J. in his arm. I, Michigan could pass the ball more if they really wanted to. You saw this against Ohio State. Ohio State shut down the run. No quorum, and Edwards was ineffective. The line was ineffective in the first half. So what happened? J.J. goes off and hits two touchdown throws. Great. right? Then he hits the one in the third quarter to Loveland. J.J. is able to do that if the team asks him to do that. Um, yesterday, J.J., three touchdown throws. He can do it. I just think Michigan is a run-first team, and they've been doing that all year. So it's like Michigan's going to just keep doing that. And they're going to do that until another team forces them to stop. Now, last year, obviously, Georgia dominant, super dominant defense. Just totally overwhelmed Michigan with their defense. And when you see, I think it was their defensive lineman run down Blake Corum in space, like, oh my word, this guy's fast. <laughs> their whole team was fast. But that was just a harbinger of doom there. <laughs> oh boy. Obviously, Georgia, they made the playoff. They looked great against LSU. And Steph, Stetson Bennett, man, he just throws some dimes. Man, he's a good quarterback. Well, I would think he has NFL potential, but I'm getting off on a side tangent. TCU. Going to be a tough matchup, but I'm, I'm, I'm just believe in this team. I believe in Michigan's conditioning. I believe in their um, adjustments. I believe that Michigan will hopefully not be blown out. <laughs> I don't do a Georgia here again where... It's like just a blowout, you know, at halftime, basically. Stay in the game, please. But I, I feel more confident versus TCU. I really do. So those are just some of my observations. TCU balance team. Duggan is the key, man. You got to stop him and his feet. I mean, will Michigan have, like, Junior Colson as a spy? Obviously, you got to really deep dive into their offense. How much do they do quarterback runs specifically versus, you know, just runs on breakdown plays, but he, he has like 90 runs, I think it is, so it's quite a bit of their offense. So, it's going to be interesting, obviously this is just my first little video, my, but I'm going to say it right here, Duggan is the key. You just got to contain him in a way that Michigan has, you know, contained other important players, but still, running quarterbacks scare me to death. They do. <laughs> no doubt about it, they scare me to death. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Let me know, what are your thoughts about TCU? I think it's going to be a good game. I think it'll be a tight game. And just my optimism, I think Michigan will pull away in the second half like they've done all year. But what do you guys think? Let me know. Hey, uh, thanks, thanks you guys for watching. As always, until I see you guys next time, go blue!